Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler. Especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I worked on Konchu and made a display for my Moon Knight figures. It took quite a bit of effort, but I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Check it out. From one giant figure to the actual giant figure, I'm gonna work on Giant Man today. I got this figure back in 2020, before I started my channel. And I remember thinking at the time, oh man, this figure is expensive. How times have changed in a few years. Oh, this figure is huge. Let me zoom out. I bought this figure because I planned on recreating the Civil War airport scene eventually. The reviews I saw said that this version isn't as good as the original release. Back then, I hadn't fixed any figures yet, but I knew I was going to one day. And with Ant-Man 3 coming out, I thought this would be the perfect time to finally work on this. Let's, Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this figure. figure. There's an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. Now, I don't own the original release, but this figure is surprisingly good. A lot of figures have this plastic shine that's not present here. And I think this figure is pretty screen accurate, including the texture. It looks like the suit is made out of some sort of leather. The only thing that's slightly incorrect is the lighter gray on this upper body. It is there, but it's a bit darker than it looks in the movie. The other thing that's a bit of a bummer is the silver, especially on the helmet. They use silver plastic instead of painting the helmet silver, so it ends up looking cheap. I do love that you can see Scott's eyes though. Is it me, or the Marvel Legends during this period better? The figures from this period seems less cartoonish to me. That said, it seems like they're putting in the effort again with the Ant-Man 3 figures. Those look great. But back to Giant Man. There's only minimal fixing to do. So, can I make it? I'm gonna try something new. I can already tell the belt area is going to be too slippery for the paint to stick onto. Normally, I would start with a thin layer and let it dry and work from there. But some of you have suggested sanding the figures before I paint. I've always avoided doing that because it feels very intimidating and irreversible. But... Ant-Man isn't my favorite Avenger. So I feel a bit braver trying this out on him. Oh, okay. So there are scratch marks but they aren't as prominent as I thought. I'm using a very fine sandpaper. I'm gonna sand the back of his legs too. Normally, I would just paint directly on the figure, after washing it with warm soapy water. But I'm curious and want to try new things. And this is the back side, so it won't be noticeable. Alright, let's see. Oh! It actually works. The paint is applying more smoothly on the plastic, and I don't see the scratch marks anymore. Wow, this is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna sand the other black areas of the suit too. So I sanded the thighs here, the side of his torso, and the upper arms. I didn't sand the other areas because those areas are already textured. The paint should apply fine there. I also didn't want to accidentally sand the silver details off. Alright, onto the main thing I want to fix. I need to mix myself a lighter shade of grey for the upper body. In some reference images, the grey appears to be quite light in shade. But in others, it's not that light. I'm gonna lean a bit on the darker side. Because I actually like how the figure looks originally. But technically it's not screen accurate, so I'm gonna fix it. The figure does lack a bit of a mid-tone shade. The black and red are the shadows, and the silver is the highlight, so this light grey fits right in the middle when it comes to tones. Okay, next. I'm gonna apply a slightly darker grey onto the back of his legs. It appears that the inner thighs are darker. Alright, that looks good. Time to work on the belt. The 
paint is sticking much better, but I still need to do a couple of layers of silver to get it to look metallic. Oh, there are some missing silver details on the torso too. Look how much better this side looks with the silver lines filled in. I'm gonna do the other side off screen. Okay, Giant Man is starting to look good, but I find the colors on the upper body quite flat, especially the gray I did. So I'm going to add a bit of dimension to the colors, starting with a bit of highlight. I'm focusing the highlight on the upper half of the shoulders, so it looks like the light is hitting from above. I'm going to add a bit of highlight on the other areas too, but a bit more subtle because these areas are pretty flat. Alright, now onto the shading. Just a bit of a black wash on the bottom parts of these areas. This will make the grey appear more three-dimensional, but I have to be careful not to overdo it otherwise it will look too dramatic. Now I'm going in with a fine brush to define and separate the different parts a bit more. Mm, okay, now the suit looks a bit too dark. I want the red to appear more vibrant, so let's see if I can brighten up the color. It is always more challenging to lighten up colors than darkening them, so we may take a couple of layers. I'm trying to keep the layers thin so I don't lose the texture. Okay, that actually took more layers than I thought. But I like that the red has more depth now. It almost looks like it's glowing in the center. Oh, I should do something to his legs. I don't think there's anything wrong with the boots. But I want to add a bit more texture. So I'm going to apply a layer of glossy varnish on certain parts of the boots. Not the entire thing. I do not want the boots to be shiny. I just want certain parts to reflect light differently. Done. Look at that. Now the boots are more sophisticated. And it's only noticeable when the light hits it at certain angles. Now I want to do the same to the upper body. The overall torso appears chalky. I think it'll look better if I make the red on his body slightly glossy too so it will look like the suit is made out of various materials. Black leather with some sort of red carbon fiber armor. Here's the head. The silver looks too plasticky and not metallic enough. I don't know why I never noticed this before. But the lights on the figure are blue because it's blue when the Ant-Man grows. Duh. Anyway, Let's sand the helmet first. I'm going to try and keep the direction I'm sanding consistent, in case it shows. Alright, let's paint. It's going to take a couple of thin layers for it to look metallic too. Once it looks metallic enough, I'm going to do a black wash to define the lines and small details. I want the helmet to look more mechanical, so it looks like the helmet is made out of multiple moving parts and it will make the silver look less squeaky clean. It will add to the realism. Okay, here's the finished head. Ooh, I love how much more metallic it looks. You can almost feel the cold metal finish. Alright, here's the finished figure. At a glance, the changes aren't that noticeable. The helmet is the first thing that sticks out, but the suit doesn't appear all that different from afar. So let's take a closer look. Ah, okay. The suit looks more three-dimensional now. The before looks much flatter in comparison. So, of all the MCU characters, Ant-Man isn't my favorite. The only other Ant-Man figure I have is this one here. And I got this because I wanted Black Widow's head. But you know what's really cool? The quantum suit was my very first Marvel Legends custom I did. Okay, I didn't do anything to Ant-Man's head. I wasn't brave enough back then. But I was testing to see if acrylic paint works on the figures. It's not that obvious on camera, but the paint on the quantum suit is quite thick and not the cleanest, application-wise. It is kind of cool to see how my techniques have changed over time. I used to paint with a damp brush so I can quickly remove the paint if I didn't like the color. Nowadays, I keep my brush pretty dry. My advice is to find brushes that work with your style. 
Most of my brushes are from the dollar store. They do deteriorate over time, but I have been using the same ones for quite a while now. The finer brushes are from an art and craft store. I can't seem to find them in dollar stores anymore. Anyway, I'm certain there are paint and brushes out there that are made for customizing. But I still believe getting familiar with the tubes is more important. That's why I tend to use tubes and materials that are easily found in stores or things that I already have at home. Speaking of, I want to try and create that shrinking or enlarging effect of the pin particles. And I saw these shrink plastic sheets from the dollar store. I used them once before to create the Eternals effect. I like that it ends up clear and plastic-like. The only thing I don't love is that it shrinks unpredictably. The Eternal effect shrunk a bit distorted, but I don't think it would be as noticeable here. Since the shapes don't have to be perfect. In the movie, it's like a transparent ghosting effect, and you only kind of see the silhouette when it's in motion. So I'm using light blue, red, and black sharpies to kind of imitate that. Mm, I think there's too much red, but we'll find out. Let's cut it out first. Cut, cut, cut. Here it is all cut out. It's almost the same size as Giant Man here. This is the largest I can do on the sheet, and it is supposed to shrink by around 50%. So let's put it in the oven and see. Oh boy, it's shrinking quite a bit. Oh wow, it's so small now. It definitely shrunk down to half its size. Maybe a bit more too. Hmm, the red is way too opaque. Let me try again, but with less red. I also did a few more of these, but they get smaller and smaller. Okay, I'm back. The red definitely looks better like this. And here are the other ones. There's this sense of movement when I put them next to each other. I think if I stack them right, I can maybe get that pin particle effect. Alright, I got my silicone mat down. It's time to UV resin. I'm using it as a glue here. I like that I can cure it very quickly and it's a pretty strong bond. Okay, I time skipped. Here are all the pieces all glued together. It looks kinda cool. Let's bring in Giant Man. Oh, okay, this isn't gonna work. It's not the right scale. But it may work with the regular size Ant-Man. Ooh, okay, okay, that looks much better. I still wish the effect could be a smidge larger. I can't wait till I get my hands on the Ant-Man 3 figures. This will look awesome with Ant-Man in his actual suit. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. Alright, let's end this with the photo shoot. This kind of looks like a regular sized figure. The knee joints on my figure are a bit loose, so I can't really do that many dynamic poses without him toppling over. I guess that's the trade off of being a giant. That said, it is very fun to put Giant Man next to regular sized figures. It almost looks like Giant Man is taking Ant Man to school or something. Here they are with the effect piece. It kind of works if you glance at it. I personally think Giant Man looks best up close. That's when you can see all the details on the suit. For some reason, these photos look very real and not very toy-like when I take close-up photos of them. Anyway, this was a very fun video to make. Give it a like if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.